Hey, Peter. Hey, give me a melody. Shoo-bee-dee-boo-dee. Your melody sucks. I'm Adam Adams. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear Podcast. Daily jazz advice coming at you. Yes, we have fun. Yeah, well, <laughs> at my expense today, apparently. What happened to Jacob Collier? I don't know. I've we never... Had two days straight of, of, <laughs> of not sounding like Jacob We got a little hate mail. Can we talk about that? We actually don't even know it, but future Adam and future Peter were the recipients of some hate comments. It seems like anytime we ever touch on Corey Henry or Jacob Collier or, <laughs> or Adam Neely. Or I hate jazz. <laughs> yeah, we get a ton of hate mail. You know, we do this in fun, and we do this for the love of it. And I right. love Jacob Collier. I think he's I like a talented too. kid, man. Yeah. Oh, well, now you're backpedaling, big guy. I'm not backpedaling <laughs> on anything. <laughs> well, you didn't do him today. Oh, that was my Jacob Collier. Oh, That's that how was? bad I am oh, at okay. it. Yeah. Got it, got it, got it. All right, what are we talking about today? We're talking about how to begin transcribing how to start transcribing how if you've never transcribed before and you hear everybody yapping on about how important this and you're like well it's too hard and you're feeling a little self-conscious perhaps maybe you're feeling a little self-conscious maybe you just need a little motivation to get off the couch and maybe you're feeling a little unworthy that's possible i mean maybe, you, so are we talking about are we talking about transcribing shaming is there such a thing as transcribe shaming? Peter, in this day and age of social media, <laughs> i go on instagram i see people like uh, young french pianist domi Domi, of course. Transcribing some OP. Domi, Ray, so far, me love. She just people. posted this thing on Instagram last night. She She's like, I, I made the challenge. I'm, this, I don't have no idea what I she sounds the like. Jazz I jazz made jazz. the challenge for myself. The and challenge. she decided, I'm going to transcribe Oscar Peterson. So I Ce forget what it was. It was le, a course of Oscar Peterson. Oscar Peterson. She's like, I'm going to read through it once, and Je then I'm going to record it. Je veux dire en voiture. And she did. And of course, it was translating for you. It was killing. Of course. It was killing. And so I felt C'est bon. I had bon a little bit of not it's not FOMO, but what it's maybe like social anxiety uh, from Adam avec le FOMO. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And Robert Glass was on there liking it. Robert Glasper, <laughs> la pianiste de Houston, Texas, <laughs> superior. It, it can be overwhelming. You, you yeah, go on oui. social media, you see what everybody else is transcribing, and you're like, well, I want to get in on it, but tout I don't have monde, the ears. Le transcribe de okay, tout le monde. This, you've taken it. Des états unis About 45 seconds, too far. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally translating what you're saying. It's pretty good. We'll, uh, comment below. Le comment uh, dans le vidéo uh, pour moi. Le so comment. <laughs> All right, so let's get into this. Transcribing on a serious note. Yeah, so if you've never transcribed before, these are just going to be some basic things you can do, some things to keep in, in mind, and maybe some motivation to get you going. And uh, yeah. Right. So we are anti uh, transcribing shaming here at the You'll Hear podcast, um, but we are very pro transcribing. Yes. So, and then just to preface this, this is definitely c'est difficile, as we say in France. What? That this is difficult. Oh, it is. C'est difficile. Yep. So, meaning that. You know, this is not something that you're going to get immediate gratification from. But like a lot of things in life, if you go into that kind of understanding that, that can actually make it a lot easier. Yeah. So you're going to have times where you spend an hour and you're like, wow, I didn't get anything accomplished. This is not like going out and mowing your lawn where you've got the mower, you've got the gas and then or electric hashtag electric, but like you just, you know, you're going to push it through grass, you know, job done. This is more of like ups and downs, one step forward, two steps back. Um, very difficult at the very beginning of the process. So that's why a lot of people stop it. Yep. Like as you get into it, it will get easier and mm -hmm. it'll get harder at a certain point. But I mean, the more you do of this, the easier, but, but that's why so many people don't do it. Right? right. And so even though we know we're recommending this and we can give you a laundry list of amazing musicians that we know and have played with and that we've heard of and that we've read about that have all done this so we know it's an important activity even saying that we know that many of you will not do this because of the difficult difficulty level and i think there's aside from the difficulty level there it seems to be a monumental amount of work at first right yeah. if you never transcribed a whole solo before you're like oh my gosh this is going to take me a year i can't believe i have to do this yeah so that's why i recommend starting out by picking one phrase pick one phrase pick one lick she ba do ba dee ba. That's a transcribe what Peter just sang. Right. Is that the <laughs> that's not the lick actually? No, it's it's one lick. of the licks. It's, it's lick it's, number it's two. It's a lick. It's a lick. But so and and I think the key to this too is pick something that you love to listen to. Yeah. Pick something that you already know. Maybe it's like Miles Davis's, you know, Freddie Freeloader or whatever, and it's one 
one single phrase from Winton Kelly, one single phrase from Miles or, or whomever. It doesn't have to be even on your instrument, but pick something that you already know and love and just say, okay, today I'm just going to figure out this lick. I would just say one caveat to that. Absolutely, it should be something that you love. But when you're starting out especially, err on the side of, like maybe t- pick five things that you love and, and then pick out a phrase from that to get into it. Mm-hmm. But then pick the simplest one. And now that's hard to maybe decide sometimes, but you can usually sort of figure out, like in other words, if you love Jacob Collier, don't go to his hardest YouTube video and be like, I'm going to transcribe that because you're going to get frustrated. Right. I'm not saying you can't do it, but you want to work, like you want to have some kind of chronology and pedagogy to how you're doing this. It doesn't have to be perfectly in order, right. but I mean, we always talk about the Freddie Freeloader solo just because, I don't know, we're stuck on that, but also it, it's kind of that intersection between a relatively simple, it is not simplistic. No. It's a very advanced musical uh, solo, but it's relatively simple to get into and to learn. For and sure. doable. I mean, you can still spend hours on just one phrase with that, especially to get it accurately, but you can get the notes relatively easy. There's some very good transcriptions. We'll link below to, to uh, our Freddie Freeloader uh, free transcription we have of that, although we're going to get into some controversial area already because we're going to recommend that you learn it by ear and not by page, even though I just told you about the PDF. Download below. You're confusing me already, <laughs> but I think this is a good point. So it's, Use it as an aid. Use it as an aid. The point is, though, is to start off as simple as possible. Yeah. Don't feel like you have to transcribe an entire you know, Brad Meldow intro to all the things you are at Live at the Village Vanguard, an eight-minute solo piano right. epic from Keith Jarrett or something. Like. And, and even, but but it still should be combined to what you said before, something that you love. Something and that something you that love. you've been listening to. And I think that the litmus test is it has to be something that you love and something that you can sing, at least yeah. the phrase you're learning. So this is something that I remember one of my teachers uh, at the new school, Hal Galper, used to say, sit, be able to sing what you're going to transcribe first. Right. Spend your time listening to it and singing along with it. Man, I remember back in 78 when I taught Hal Galper that concept, and he stole it from me, man. Yeah, no, he, I was yeah. eight. I was eight. <laughs> but I think it's, a, it's an important point, because yep. if you can't sing it, you can't play it right. Right. You know? Um, and also, don't write it down. Do not write it down. Don't write it down. And if possible, do not read it from the page, even though we're telling you. And look, we can recommend some good transcriptions. We've done transcriptions. For sure. Um, and if you need to use that, depending on your time, there's nothing wrong with that. But in general, learn it by ear because that is the biggest part, and we haven't even spoken about that yet. But let's talk about it now. What are we getting out of the process of transcription? Not like what do we get at the end? Like we get the solo that we can use the licks. Right. We get the solo that we understand the concept. We have the solo that we can incorporate specific musical concepts, groove, voicings, whatever it is, into our playing. But even more important, just like life in its in itself, is the journey. Like if you're not enjoying the journey of soloing and I think that these ideas of something that's easy enough and something that you know really well that's the easiest way to do this and because it's still going to be hard but at least if you love it and it's somewhat simple you'll be able to do it and so then you'll be able to enjoy the journey you'll be able to get out of the process the ear training and all the other beautiful things that come along with that yeah I think let's let's define a little bit of what you get out of this and uh, for you know maybe some inspiration for folks because I feel like most people go to transcription with the idea of I'm here to gather information. Right. right? Like it's some kind of a musical jazz archi- ar- archaeological dig. Right. Like I'm going to learn use some, use some piece of theory that's going to push me over the top. And that's right. the absolute not primary reason you should be transcribing. Can you dig it, though? You, it? You, sh- you can dig it, okay. but you shouldn't dig like an archaeologist looking right. for Dig artifacts. like a jazz player with a beret. Yeah, it's very cheap just information and you can't become a better player just by gathering information no that's not how this works it it would be like a poet studying you know uh like uh quantum theory you know and then trying to write beautiful poetry without actually knowing how anything sounds right right it's just like okay well now this is just a bunch of jargon that sounds complicated but it doesn't hit anybody right but like a, a great poet can make very simple ideas seem powerful and sound amazing in your head as you're reading. And it's the same thing with a great jazz musician. It can make very simple ideas seem very powerful and connective. And that's what you're getting out of this. And sometimes even take very complicated ideas, make them seem simple and powerful and beautiful. Absolutely. But uh, in a lot of ways, it's it's not about the information. It's about how that information is played. And that's what you need to be paying attention to. And that's why we say don't write it down, because it's actually not as important as how it sounds. Right. You shouldn't feel like 
And and look, there's some instances we may not get into that today where writing it down is okay and can be helpful. For sure. But it's not the primary part of why we're recommending you do this and why traditionally jazz musicians have done this. And that will keep you out of that mindset of an archaeolog- archaeologist where you're sort of digging for this and then you've got this treasure to bring home. Like w- there is the, the treasure that you're going to bring with you is – what you're getting from the process of that. And then you will get some things too, like that you'll be able to play. I always tell people like, don't worry about that. Like that's the part that's going to come automatically. It's going to be easy. Oh, I don't know why people are so like afraid of like, well, what about, I don't want to forget the licks. I want to have them down. Really? You, are you going to bring a list of the licks you learned from it's the terrible. solo tour gig Horrible. so that you can reference them? The only reason you should write it down is, is when you are at the stage where you're ready to do some, you know, melodic, harmonic, rhythmic analysis, but that is not going to stick with you in the same way as learning how to play it exactly how the master who you're learning from is playing it right? at all. And it's not going to help your playing as much as you think it is. Right. Now, having said that, just as a little side note, it's fun to watch you're like... Caveat City over sorry, there. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> CS, Caveat City. No, so... Um, oh, no, I was ignorant. CC, actually. <laughs> Caveat City. Ooh, that was bad. Okay, we're going to edit that out. But um, the Caveat idea- <laughs> City is not spelled with an S. <laughs> no, but the idea that it is fun to look at a great transcription, as like especially that's what I'm loving about the YouTube era, that you can see like an Oscar Peterson soul scrolling by or our living notation. We've been known to do a little bit of transcribing For here sure. at Open Studio. That is fun to see. And I think as, you know, we softened over the years, uh, you know, due to popular demand. People just wanted it. And a lot of people just don't have time. Like they want to learn. So my thing is like it's not binary. It's not like, okay, I'm learning it out of the transcription and I've never even heard the soul. I'm just learning it like I'm learning a Chopin etude. Or I'm learning it totally by ear or blindfolded. No, it doesn't have to be that. You want to at least learn some of it by ear, and then maybe you reference a high-quality transcription, which is harder than you think to actually find. That's the other thing. Anyway, it's just like the real book problems or whatever. And we got a little dogmatic a couple weeks ago. Got some negative comments on our dog dogmatism, just so you know. On the real book? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We, we, we well, were a little dark on that. Too bad we were right. We were t- <laughs> Whoa. No, we, we weren't talking about people are bad with the – I mean, it's just like, you know – well, anyway, anyway, that's another, another discussion. No, I, I agree with you that there, there's some definitely some value. But yeah. if you want to get better, the best way to do it is by ear. Absolutely, music is a language, and just like if you were learning French, like my boy Peter Martin over here. Oui, je suis Pierre Martin. Like the great. Je suis American. Domaine. Des États-Unis. Can she speak le French like me? Have you heard her play? Man, yeah. she's amazing. She's amazing. Uh, she transcribes a lot, by the way. Yeah. I wonder if she probably doesn't need this, but... She seems like a practicer, actually. Yeah, maybe she has something like this. I mean, look, we're not going to tell you that you're not going to become a better musician, better transcriber without the Open Studio practice journal, or as we call it, the Pujo. <laughs> right? Practice journal. Not like a bullet journal. Why, why is that funny, man? Because there's no you in practice. <laughs> well, what am I going to call it? The Cujo? <laughs> like, the, like the dog? The, the Prajo. Prajo. Prajo doesn't that sounds sound so as precious. Good. Exactly. Know, so now call it the Pujo, like we want to call it. No, but look, you can learn Pujo. You can learn a transcription without this. Uh, many, Adam and I have done it, but so much more fun with this. Just like for years, hipsters were able to survive without bullet journals, but isn't life so much better with a bullet journal? Tell me, bud. <laughs> so we encourage you. So, like, what you could do, goals for the week. Transcribe a solo. That would be my number one goal. I would put there. Transcribe notes. four bars of a solo. And look, if you're kind of wondering about, you want to throw, you know, throw a few notes in there. We got a place for you. Tunes, scales, rhythm. That'll just remind you that you're not just practicing the transcription. That's just one part of your practice. So this is a cool thing, and it's available now. And we're gonna do some specials coming up. I mean, you can you can go now and just buy it on its own. But we're gonna start including this with some of the courses. I think that's the right thing to do. All right, all right. And uh, until tomorrow, you'll hear it. <laughs>